Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so as all of you know, I think here know, my name is Zach Jenkins, and I'm the Workforce Development Associate for uh, the Arnold School of Public Health in the Department of Public Health Practice and Workforce Development. And it is truly an honor to be here with all of you today. I'm very excited to have our second ever MPH professional development session uh, hosted by our very own Casey. Um, but I'll give her introduction in a second. But mm -hmm. if you're wondering what this is all about, this is a new initiative that the school's doing where MPH students can submit proposals of things you might just be really, really good at. And so Casey was identified as somebody who has a lot of skills with Canva. And so if you have your own skill that you're thinking, man, I, you know, I'm really good at time management or whatever the, the you know, that thing is for you, uh, you know, let's talk and maybe we can do this sometime in the fall or spring. For those graduating, just go get a job and then I'll bother you for other things. Um, but anyway, so this is something we're going to start doing on a regular basis. Last year, we had uh, Chantal Laflame do an e-portfolio training. So, you know, it's all of those skills that you may have that aren't necessarily, you're getting necessarily directly in your uh, MPH courses. But anyways, it's great to be here with all of you. And I'm actually going to put that link in the chat just for those that are interested in that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm just going to lay a couple of ground rules down. And then for the first time ever, I'll do the least talking in the meeting, hopefully from this point on. Uh, but just just to, uh, you know, please demonstrate respect for our speaker and for all of the other attendees. Uh, please keep your microphone off throughout the presentation unless you're asking a question. Um, and then also feel free to drop questions in the chat if things are coming up. You know, we're, you're amongst friends. This is a fun learning interactive environment. And then just know, and you already heard at the beginning, but we are recording the webinar and we'll post it on our website. So don't say anything or do anything crazy that you may not want a future student to hear or that kind of thing. And I say that as a reminder for myself yeah. as well. Uh, but anyways, with that, let me introduce Casey, although I don't think she needs a, an introduction. Uh, so Casey Drayton is a second year MPH student in the Physical Activity and Public Health program in the Department of Exercise Science at the Arnold School of Public Health. In addition to already holding a master's degree of sports psychology from Florida State University, uh, Casey has a graduate assistantship uh, here at the school, and she is currently completing her practice experience with the YMCA of Greater St. Petersburg. So with that, I'm going to hand the virtual baton over to Casey. So the floor is officially yours. <laughs> Thank you, Zach, for that intro. Um, so like you said, I'm Casey, um, and today we're just going to go through a little bit about Canva. Um, so this is Canva Unlocked, um, creating professional public health infographics. And at any time, if y'all cannot see the screen, please let me know. Oops. All right, there we go. All right, so on the agenda for today, how do I get this to go away? Anyways, um, so we're going to go over what Canva is um, and why I enjoy using it. I'm also going to do a quick breakdown of Canva Pro and some of its features that I think are um, good, especially for public health professionals. And then the fun part, we're going to kind of make our own infographic. Um, so let's just go ahead and get into it. All right, so what is Canva? Um, Canva is a program, if anyone's not familiar with it, I think most people have at least heard of Canva, um, but it's a program that allows you to create a wide variety of projects and designs. Um, I think it's a great tool for public health just because it's easy to use and it's kind of an all-in-one tool. So as you can see, um, you have your typical things like your presentations, infographics, um, social media posts, but you also can make t-shirts, magazine covers, um, like with the t-shirts, it'll do a mock-up for you so you can see what it would look like on an actual person. Um, if you're working for DHEC and they're like, hey, we're about to drop like the next Billboard Top 100 album, you can make the CD cover for that. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do with Canva and it's super easy to use, super fun. Um, so let's go into some of my reasons for why I like Canva. Um, so here's my top three. The first being creativity. Um, so with Canva, you're allowed to customize pretty much every aspect of the project that you're working on. And like I've said, and like I'm going to say probably a million times, it's super easy to do so. Um, there's tons of templates you can choose from, so you don't necessarily have to start um, from like a blank page. I know that can be overwhelming sometimes. You're just looking at a blank screen and you're like, where am I even about to start? So the good thing about Canva is they have, honestly, I don't even want to say hundreds or thousands. There's 
not millions, but somewhere in between. They have a lot of templates you can choose from. Um, the second reason is Canva Pro, which I'll get into after this. Um, but if you are able to upgrade to Canva Pro, you can do so many things. Um, that's what I use. I've upgraded to it. And I think it's a great investment. But like I said, I'll talk about that next. And then my third reason is that Canva is fun. Um, in my opinion, it's more fun to use than your just like your traditional programs like PowerPoint, Google Slides. Um, and I'm not going to say it's more powerful than Photoshop, but it's easier to use. There's less of a learning curve. Um, so you can kind of just jump into projects and get to designing and creating a lot easier than you would with Photoshop. So I just think it's a little bit more fun. All righty. And so Canva Pro. So as you can see, this isn't even all of the features of Canva Pro, but these are some of the ones that I like the most. Um, but basically Canva Pro is like the next step up from the free version. Um, it has a lot of key features, which I'll go over next, that really will allow you to take your projects and your designs to the next level. Um, it's at a lovely price of $119 per year. So if it is something that you are able to afford, um, I highly recommend going ahead and purchasing it. You can do a seven day free trial. And I will say I've done the free trial multiple times and I didn't use multiple emails. I think they really just want you to experience it. So there's been times where I finished a free trial and then like a week later got another offer for a free trial. Um, so definitely something to take advantage of. But like I said, if you are able to afford the 119 a year, um, it is a good investment, especially if you're going to be in a position where you have to make lots of presentations, infographics, um, social media posts, things like that. Sorry if you can hear my computer. It sounds like a jet engine again. <laughs> so I apologize if y'all can hear that. But here are my four key features um, of Canva Pro. So the first one is magic resize and it does what you think it would. Um, so this will automatically reformat your design to fit any size. So say you've been working on an infographic for hours and hours and you're finally, it's so perfect. You finally finished it. Your supervisor comes in and is like, hey, yeah, this needs to be an Instagram post. And you're just like, okay, magic resize. You literally just click a button, go scroll down to the Instagram post, if whether you need it as a reel, um, a story or an actual post, it'll automatically resize that. Um, it'll fit everything to the correct proportion so you don't have to go back and basically redo the entire design that you just spent hours working on. Um, it also allows you to copy and then resize. So it'll save that original format and then just make a copy over to the new one. So then in two days when your supervisor comes back and says, hey, we need that infographic, you still have that too. Um, so the next one is the brand kit. And this is helpful when you're working with an organization that has um, specific colors that you have to use, um, if there's certain fonts, um, if they have specific logos that have to be on designs. This allows you to kind of put all of those things in one spot. And I'll show y'all later kind of what that looks like. Um, but you're able to upload those fonts if they're not already in Canva. Canva has a lot of fonts. Um, but you can upload those fonts. You can save the colors, save the logos, and it's all in one spot that's easy to access no matter what project you're working on. So great tool to have, especially when you're working in a public health organization. Um, the third thing is unlimited content. So with the free version, I believe you have access to the pro content, but if you use it in a presentation, it says like Canva across it with like a watermark and nobody likes that. That doesn't look professional. Um, so with Canva Pro, you get access to all the templates, all the images, all the fonts, all the graphics. Um, I believe on their price breakdown sheet, they have over 100 million photos and graphics. So you'll always be able to find something for whatever it is that you're working on. Um, and it just allows you to enhance your designs and take your projects to a more, like just a better uh, design. And so the last one is my favorite feature and it's the background remover. Um, so this basically will, if you take an image, it'll automatically remove the background. Um, and so I'll demonstrate this later, but I don't know about y'all, but I hate when you select an image and it's just like that rectangle, you have a whole bunch going on in the background. Sometimes you wanna just have, if you have a group of people, you want just those people to be the focus. So you can remove the background, 
Um, those people will be your focal point. And it also allows you to be more flexible with where you put your images and things like that. Um, but I'll demonstrate that in a little bit when we make our own infographic. All right. And so the topic of today, infographics. So like I said, um, with Canva, you can do presentations, infographics, and a whole bunch of other things. Um, but today we're going to focus on the infographics. There's lots of templates that you can choose from. And so I'm going to show y'all an example of basically how you're able to take a template that might not have anything to do with what your project is, but you can completely transform it. Um, and again, you don't necessarily have to do that. It might be that you find a template that's perfect for what you need. And all you have to do is go into your brand kit, change your fonts, um, change your colors to match your organization, and then just change the content. But you leave the format the same. Um, you might even be able to use some of the same images. Or you might just like the way that the template is laid out. That's pretty much what I did when I'm about to show y'all. Um, and you can go in and just completely transform um, these templates. So really quick, I'm going to show y'all an example um, of one that I've done. And in my mind, this was, say, for um, like a high school advisement room. Um, so I started off with this template about SUVs versus MPVs. It has nothing to do with anything. Um, but you are able to take that and transform it into something completely different. So if for those who don't know me, I'm from Florida, big Florida State versus Florida. I'm on Florida State side. So I'll judge a little bit if you're on the Florida side. Um, but as you can see, I kept some of the same elements. So I liked this middle section. That's really the main thing I liked. So I was like, we're going to roll with it. Um, but for this, I used my brand kit. So I went, I Googled um, the different fonts for Florida State and for Florida, uploaded that into my brand kit, found the specific colors that they used, uploaded that into my brand kit. Um, and then basically was able to go in and change literally every aspect of that template um, to fit the need of what I wanted to do. So if I'm trying to hang up an infographic about two of the main colleges in Florida for my high school students, Boom, it's a quick infographic that they're able to look at. Um, for these images, this one was taken out of football game. So you can imagine what the background looked like. This one was from a basketball game. So pretty hectic backgrounds. I use the background remover tool um, and it just makes everything look clean and professional. Um, Casey, so, we, we not to cut you off, but we've got a question in the chat and I think it's oh, probably yeah. just answered now. Um, before I forget, uh, Mayra, and thank you for your question, Mayra. It says that not a Canva question, but you, she loved the an, they love the animations and the presentation. And what program did you happen to use for those? I used Canva, <laughs> so that's another feature um, of Pro. Is you have a ton of I think there's I think there's fourteen total different animations, but then within each animation, you're kind of able to go in. You can change the intensity, um, change the speed. Um, you can say whether it's coming in on both the entrance and the exit, just the exit, just the entrance. Um, you can change the direction sometimes, depending on what the animation actually is. But yeah, I did everything in Canva. So <laughs> We have a comment in the chat that uh, this is amazing. And if you guys think this is amazing, uh, buckle up because the, the next interactive part uh, really is impressive. So I'll, I'll turn it back over to you. Sorry to interrupt, Casey. No, you're fine. So if everyone could go to Menti, and if you're not able to see the code, um, I'll put it in the chat. Oh gosh, can I see the code? How do I get this little piece to go away? Um, so we can see the color scheme, just so you know. Okay, can you see the part where it says the code? There it is. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's one four zero four three eight two seven. Um, and so what we're gonna do is go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna be the tiebreaker just in case we have a tie. Um, but go ahead and rank. Okay, cool. So yeah, rank your color that you like the most. And then there's how many, 10? Oh, I guess I need to log in. Okay, I have two responses so far. So let's see who's gonna win. Yellow is just struggling right now. We're not big yellow fans. <laughs> That's okay. 
Mm -hmm. All right. So I think I need, four, oh, I'm included in the 10. So we need three more votes, I think. Three more votes. And, and as you all have learned it through classes in the HISPM department, voting is an important part of the health advocacy you know, process. So do vote. Yes. And I think we just need two more maybe. And I could really be wrong. I Math is not my strong point. Well, so and, <laughs> and Blue just may, if, if those cannot participate and fully vote, Blue just may I be think, the way to go for today. I think Blue, oh, look at yellow. Oh, uh oh. Okay, I think we're there. All right, Blue is our winner. All right, so next, I'm gonna show y'all three templates. Don't look at the color schemes of the templates. Don't pay attention to those because we are going with, what did I say we're doing? Blue, we're going with blue. So we're just looking at the templates. Can everyone see still? Okay, so this is template number one. Take a good look at it. Take it all in. Oops. This is template number two. Again, don't pay attention to the colors. We're gonna change everything. All right, template two and template three. So just take them all in. Again, we'll go, we'll go back. So template three, template two, and template one. All right, so just keep those in your brain. And now we are gonna vote on a template. So it should have switched on your mentee. You should be able to answer the next question now. I believe yep, we, we've got it. Cool. All right. And this was where I, I might have to come in as a tiebreaker. All right. So we have one more response. Maybe. Give so for that. whatever reason, it's not uploading on the slide, but it says it's collected our uh, our responses. So we'll, we'll trust you on whatever the official uh, oh yeah, I got it. So we have all nine responses. So let's see. Let's see who's going to win. All right, template three. All right. <laughs> so we are going to go ahead and design template three. All right. So this is where I'm just going to kind of give a demonstration of some of those four key features um, that I went over before. Um, so the first thing, it kind of, it's already blue, but we can pick different blues. So the first thing we're going to do is anything that you click on, you're able to change like the color scheme of it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click on this top section right here. And we're going to change the color. So if you can see over here, I don't know if y'all can see my cursor, but over here where it says untitled brand kit. So I've added one for this presentation. Um, as you can see, when I made my other infographic, I have all those other colors already saved. So if we click on edit, we can add our colors. So we are going to be blue. So let's add like a light blue that's a little different than that light blue. Let's add like a darker blue. And then let's see. I wonder if we can do like a, do we want to do a, let, let's do like a, that's close to what's already on there. Let's do it. Let's go with that one. All right, so now those are our colors for our organization that we have to use. Just for the sake of time, I'm not going to go and find like a specific font to upload, um, but you would be able to do that as well. And it would appear, it'll appear in your uploaded fonts if you don't add them to your brand kit. But if you add them to your brand kit, it's easy as just clicking that button and uploading them from your computer. Um, but let's go ahead and go in and say we want to make this part dark and we'll make this section down here dark. So cool, we're gonna, this one was already kind of blue so there's not too much to change, but we're gonna change it just for the sake of changing it. And then let's make these this color and then we'll change our font to that other blue. And so with this, you don't necessarily either have to like highlight your font, you can just select the whole text box and it'll go ahead and change it for you. Cool. So now say our organization is like, we don't want cartoon images. We want real life National Geographic quality images. So if we click on this and we go over to our elements, we can go ahead and search. So I'm gonna search, um, let's see, 
butterfly eggs. And see, I've already done that. And so we're going to go to photos because we want live photos. And there was one that I've already used. So I'm going to find it because I know it'll work well. Here we go. Okay. So remember how I was like, when you select images, you don't necessarily want this big rectangle. Um, so that's where our background mover is going to come in. So we have our image selected. We're going to go to edit image. And this is where we're going to click on the background remover. And so we'll give it a second. And it's basically just going to remove everything that it deems to be the background. And what I like about this tool is you are able to go in and kind of erase or restore. If there's, if there's sections that it took out that you want it to be in there, you're able to go in. And so this one, it actually did it pretty well, um, but just for the sake of showing you. So pro tip, if you click out of the image, and then try to go back, it won't let you erase or restore. So make sure you do this before you click off the image. Um, so you can click either one, it doesn't matter. And it's gonna bring you to this screen. Um, you can show the original image and say you wanted to like have a section over here, you would kind of just color it in and then that would be included in your image. So we don't want that. So we're gonna go back and erase it. And then we're gonna hit done. And now we have this wonderful, just high quality image of some butterfly eggs. So we can go ahead and delete that one. We're going to resize this a little bit and kind of put it right in here. There we go. All right. And so we're going to do the same thing for our other images. And so next we want a caterpillar. All right, and so we're going to do this guy. And so if anyone has name suggestions, please drop them in the chat because we're going to name this guy as well. And we're going to go ahead and use the background remover on this one. And we'll see, sometimes it'll try to remove the stick that he's on. We want to keep it there though. So he's not just kind of floating around in space. Perfect. So that one actually did pretty well. So we're going to delete that one. We're going to go ahead and resize. Do we have a name suggestion? Heimlich. <laughs> love it. I mean, as a Bugs Life fan, I mean, you got to go Heimlich, you know? Got to go with it. I love it. I love it. So we're going to put Heimlich over here. He's just kind of hanging out. All right. And now we need, we're going to look for a chrysalis. I'm probably going to butcher this. It's spelled in other, look. I can spell sometimes, friends. There we go. All right. And so we're going to remove that one. I like this one right here. So Heimlich is now getting ready to turn into a beautiful butterfly. So we're going to go ahead and remove the background on this one too. And so hopefully y'all are seeing kind of just how easy it is um, to do things in Canva. And I'll show you some other little like quick tips, if you could say, um, to make things just easy when you're creating uh, projects and designs and things like that. All right, so there's Heimlich. He's growing into a beautiful butterfly. And now, ah, let's find, there we go. Let's use this one. We're gonna remove the background again. And so one thing I like too is, obviously if you're gonna print an infographic, you won't necessarily be able to use like animated images or things like that. But if you're doing an infographic that's going to be maybe on a Facebook page or something like that, you also have the option to go into the graphics and you can you could easily find a butterfly flapping its wings, um, things like that. They have audio. So if there's a song of the butterfly that you would like to use, you could put that in your project, literally whatever you could possibly dream of, um, you're able to put it in a design. Um, so there we go. We've used our background remover. Um, we've removed the background of all these images. So now we just have that. We could submit this to National Geographic right now and they'll be like, oh my gosh, this is so great. Um, so I want to show y'all real quick too the magic resize. So we've spent so much time on this um, wonderful life cycle of butterfly infographic. And like we said, our supervisor came in and said, no, it's an Instagram post. We're going to go over here to where it says resize. Hopefully y'all can see that. And so there's obviously other, you really can change it to anything you want. Um, but we are going to find the square Instagram post. 
So we're going to check that and we're going to do the copy and resize. So it's going to save our original infographic. We're going to click that. It's going to do its thing. And boom, there's our infographic resized to fit on an Instagram post. Um, so just some of the things that you're able to do. And just to highlight some of the other things, um, like I said, like let's search butterfly. You can choose from graphics. So like I had mentioned, if you had an infographic or a post that was gonna be online where people would be able to see animations, you have plenty to choose from. Um, and if you are using Canva and you're not using the pro feature, so any item that has this little crown next to it is gonna be a pro feature. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you are using the free version, if you select one of these, it's just gonna kind of have that watermark on it. Um, but if you do upgrade to pro, you have access to all of these. Um, like I said, there's videos that you can choose from, audio. Um, if you wanted just a tranquil video of some butterflies flying around, you're able to do that. Um, this is where you can upload any images that you're gonna use. So like I had mentioned before, I had those images that had backgrounds to it, remove those backgrounds. This is actually new within literally like the last day or two is a brand hub. So now you have a hub for everything you need for your specific brand or like if you're working for an organization. Um, so those are just some of the main features that I like about Canva and hopefully it introduced y'all to some new uh, features. So let's go back here. And thanks for participating again, y'all, with the um, Menti polls. That was fun. All right, let me move this out of the way. So we obviously saw an infographic for like a high school advisor that they may use. Um, we made one about butterflies, but what about public health? Um, so here are just some ideas of different things that you can create in Canva as a public health professional. So theoretical models, we love them so much. Um, you can have fun making them in Canva. Um, there's a lot of templates. I know I was doing my run through with Zach and he was looking at the butterfly one and you could you literally use that template and just take all the butterflies out and turn it into a theoretical model um, just because of that cycle format that it has already. Um, participant recruitment, if you need to make flyers, um, policy one pagers, you can do health education infographics, um, work products. If you're in your practice experience, I've done all of my practice experience stuff in Canva for the most part. Um, I've made a presentation. Um, I've done cost analysis breakdowns in Canva. Um, you can also do data dissemination. So really anything that you could think of and you want to kind of have more fun doing it than say working like in Excel or working in PowerPoint, you can have a little bit more fun when you work um, with Canva. So those are just some ideas. If y'all have any other ones that you can think of, you can go ahead and share them in the chat. Um, but yeah. And so here are some, um, oh, is that one not showing up? That's no fun. But I think Emily would have remembered this one. Remember when we made that infographic? Um, I don't even remember what, what class was it. But when we made the one about um, hurricane preparedness, so it's not showing up. I'm sorry. I don't know why it's not appearing. Um, but we made an infographic about um, hurricane preparedness and like what to do in the case of a flood. Um, so that's an idea, an example of what you could use Canva for. Um, and then this image also isn't showing up, but I don't know if, I don't know if Dan's here. I know Parker's not, but we did with Dr. Davis. Um, we made Instagram posts. And so this was, I used another website as well, but brought it all together in Canva. Um, but just an example of what you're able to do with Canva. I'm sorry those aren't showing up. That stinks. Um, but if anyone would like to see them, I can send them to you and just ask. Um, but yeah, there you go. So thank you. Um, I hope y'all learned something from me today. Um, go out there, be creative. Um, do that seven day free trial of Canva Pro. Um, if your trial expires, you still get to keep all the projects you've made. So go ahead, go crazy. Um, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. I hope y'all learned something today. Casey, thank you so much for the, such an amazing, interesting, and fun, creative presentation. And we're all giving you virtual, um, you know, hurrahs and thank yous through uh, through the ether here.
Um, also, I think it's very fitting that you chose a butterfly for the practice for the example presentation because we all started in the larva stage and now we're all ready to fly um, using Canva yes. that kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> so uh, really cool. So what uh, does anybody have any questions or comments or anything that they want to ask Casey? Yeah, I have a question, Casey. Um, I remember when you made the the infographic. It was for qualitative. Oh yes. <laughs> well, um, you know, talking about resiliency and and emergency preparedness and whatnot. Um, so what got you really interested um in Canva? I mean, your passion for doing it clearly shows through, and you're obviously really good at it as well. I know it's it's you know, it seems like it's pretty easy to use, but um, I mean, you know all the, the tips and tricks and everything. So what got you really interested in it? Really? So I was trying to think of when. I started using it and I don't know if it was my last master's program or if it was here, honestly, but I think someone may have mentioned Canva. And so I just like went to the website and I was like, oh, this looks cool. Like this looks fun. And then I want to say I started using just the free version. And then I noticed that like it had watermarks everywhere. And I was like, this is not cute. Um, and so I did the free trial of the pro version. I was like, oh, wait, I can do a lot with this. Um, and just me, I personally just don't like boring presentations. Um, and so like, I've always been semi-creative for the most part. Um, so anytime I have the opportunity to kind of make something a little bit more interesting and fun, I'm going to jump on it. So being able to use Canva, like I know I had an assignment. I want to say it was like a professional development assignment that we had with one of Dr. O'Neill's classes. And it really was supposed to just be a paper, I think. And I emailed her and I was like, can I do mine in Canva? She was like, sure. So I was like, okay. So really any opportunity that I've had to use Canva, I try to use it. One to just kind of build up sort of like a portfolio, just in case like a job comes along where it's literally like, hey, do you want to be our person that makes presentations? I'm like, yeah, I do. Um, so I really just try to take any opportunity that I can to create stuff in Canva. Like I said, I've been doing it with my practice experience um, and I just, I really just enjoy it. So I think once I found out how fun it was, I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing everything in Canva. <laughs> like, I don't care. I'm going to make it work. So, so yeah. A great question. Uh, any other questions or comments or anything y'all want to ask Casey while we have, the, while we have her here? So, I mean, she's graduating soon. She's, she's going to be moving on to bigger and better things. So now's the time, you know. So I will start my closing statement unless I see somebody else uh, raise a hand or pop in the chat or anything like that. Um, but, you know, so this was just an idea that developed because of something that we knew Casey had a skill set for. So for my first year MPH students, uh, not to put anybody on the spot specifically, but Tamara and Aaron, I, you know, what are those skills and things that maybe you could do next year? We've done e-portfolios, we've done a Canva now. So what's gonna be the next uh, MPH professional development session that you're gonna be leading? So I'll kind of plant that seed in your mind as we move forward uh, into the rest of the 2023. But I really appreciate all of you being here and interacting with such with such an awesome presentation from Casey. Casey, thank you for taking time to do this and share your mastery with the rest of us. Um, this has been amazing and I'm really proud of you. And I know that, uh, you know, your star is going to continue to, you know, shoot and shine. And you're, so really excited to see where your career takes you. I do hope that everybody has a wonderful day and I will talk to hopefully all of you all soon. So you take care. <laughs> Thanks Bye. for coming, y'all. And shout out to Dr. Davis. She's the one who nominated me. So if you watch this later, Dr. Davis, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Take care, y'all. Bye, y'all. Thanks, Casey. Thanks, y'all.